February 1947 brought one of Purdue University's most famous tragedies. There are not many people left alive who remember the Purdue bleacher collapse. But two witnesses, still both sharp as attack, are sharing their story more than 70 years later. Olin Augie Martin is 92 years old. About 10 a.m. Monday through Friday, you'll find him walking the track at Lambert Field House. Practically every day of the year. Augie is the definition of a boilermaker. He went to Purdue, played for Purdue, and worked for Purdue. I think I've been in every building and every room on campus. Went by 40 years that I worked at Purdue. But he can't walk into this building without remembering one of Purdue's most famous tragedies. That's the thing I remember about Lambert Field House. Monday. February 24th, 1947. That day was a very exciting day in the Purdue campus because that evening, 7 o'clock, the Boilermakers were going to play Wisconsin in a basketball game here in the field house. The game was a complete sellout. There were 11,000 people packed into the stands. As the halftime buzzer sounded, Purdue took a 34 to 33 lead over the Badgers into the locker room. About 4,000 fans were seated right about here on the east side of the court, all in temporary stands. Purdue fans stood up to cheer and clap and get excited. And as the, the players left, they sat down in unison. And as that happened, the bleachers on the east side of the field house started to collapse. I didn't see it happen because we went down at the half. Bill Berberian was the starting guard for the Boilermakers that day. He may be 96 now, but remembers it vividly. When I came up, all the, the, the the stands were flat. People described it who were there, described it as like an accordion, uh, you know, collapsing on itself. This was like riding down on a roller coaster. It was a slow fall down. It was kind of floating. It was surprising that it didn't crash. Reports say 250 to 300 students were injured. Three were tragically killed. Historians say more would have died if it weren't for the Lafayette airwaves. John DeCamp was broadcasting the game up in the, the balcony for WBAA radio. And he said, we need ambulances, we need doctors, we need nurses. People came in trucks to take students to the hospitals. And I had a lot of friends, a lot of friends my, that were going to school with me that uh, had broken legs. An investigation concluded that the manufacturer and the people who installed the bleachers were at fault. It was really a catastrophe. Well, Purdue was not held liable, but ended up paying for all the medical and funeral expenses for its students. The second half of the game was rescheduled, and Purdue would end up losing. As for Martin and Barbarian, they both still live in West Lafayette and attend as many Purdue functions as they can.